join us in the call to worship as we gather around the Advent wreath. This year we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of doors open wide and a cure for disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. For to dream is to hope, to dream is to see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of a, of a world, world without, without fear, fear and, and a, a God, God that, that draws near. near. For this night, we celebrate Christmas. May, May we, we dream, dream to see and hope, hope to believe. believe for, for in a tiny, tiny baby, baby, God, God is, is with us. It is a blessing to worship online together on this sacred night. I invite you, if you haven't already, to light at least one candle for your time of worship. And also, if you have one, to keep a candle for the candlelight part of the service near the end. If you'd like a bulletin, it's available for you on the home page of the website in the blue worship box. But most important, no matter what this day, this week, or this year has been for you, come and turn to God who comes for us, bringing love and light and life. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, on this holy night we gather to sing your praises, joining with choirs of angels, to hear and know your word, joining with prophets of old and all who heard the angel's message, and to ponder all these things in our hearts. O oh God, come into our songs, come into our ponderings, and speak to each one of us right where we are. We pray, O oh Lord, for your spirit to gather us together, to draw near and surround us. Draw us again into your presence, into the joy, wonder, 
and mystery of Christmas that comes in the Christ child. Amen. night, as we gather in, as in anticipation of the Christ child, let us join our hearts in our prayer of illumination. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem into the darkness of every night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world so that we like Him, may offer light to this weary world. Amen. Our first scripture this evening is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exultant when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as one on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be an endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore, forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas. This evening, for the coming to Christ as a child moment, I would like to invite 
the children and the families and everyone to take a moment, hit pause in the video if you need to, but go and either get your manger or stand by your manger and introduce each of the characters in your manger as we read through the story this evening and consider the moment that they had and how all of it came together in Bethlehem this night as we celebrate Christ being born. And this evening as we read the story, I have two helpers with me who are going to be putting together our manger here at home so that we can even participate and celebrate and ponder the beauty that is Christ born. Thank you. And this evening I will be reading That Grand Christmas Day, written by Jill Roman Lord, and it's illustrated by Alicia Tr Trunfio. That Grand Christmas Day. This is the manger where Jesus first lay when he was born on that grand Christmas day. This is the cow that moved out of the way to share her own manger where Jesus first lay when he was born on that grand Christmas day. This is the angel who brought words of joy that Mary would have God's own son as her boy, next to the cow that moved out of the way to share her own manger where Jesus first lay when he was born on that grand Christmas day. This is dear Mary with twinkling eyes who sang of God's wonder and precious surprise as told by the angel who brought words of joy that she would have God's only son as her boy, next to the cow that moved out of the way to share her own manger where Jesus first lay on that grand Christmas day. This is kind Joseph, quiet, honest, and wise. who loved this dear Mary with twinkling eyes, who sang of God's wonder with precious surprise, as told by the angel who brought words of joy that she would have God's only son as her boy, next to the cow that moved out of the way to share her own manger where Jesus first lay on that grand Christmas day. This is the donkey that pranced in delight and carried dear Mary to town through the night. By following jo Joseph, quiet, honest, and wise, who loved this dear Mary with twinkling eyes, who'd wor heard words of comfort and news of great joy, that she would have God's only son as her boy. Next to the cow that moved out of the way, to share her own manger where Jesus first lay when he was born on that grand Christmas day. This is the keeper whose inn could not keep dear Mary and Joseph. But let them both sleep in the stable with cows and goats and sheep. along with the donkey that pounced in delight, carried dear Mary to town through the night, who'd heard words of comfort and news of great joy, that she would have God's only son as her boy, next to the cow that moved out of the way, to share her own manger where Jesus first lay when he was born on that grand Christmas day. This is Christ Jesus, the baby adored, the great King of kings and our Savior and Lord, born in the stable with cows, goats, and sheep, 
the only place Mary and Joseph might sleep. Along with the donkey that pranced in delight and carried dear Mary to town through the night, who'd heard words of comfort and news of great joy, that she would have God's only son as her boy. Next to the cow that moved out of the way to share her own manger where Jesus first lay when he was born on that grand Christmas day. Christ Jesus was born on that grand Christmas day. Merry Christmas. May the peace of God be with you, and may your day be filled with love and joy. Good night. invite you to take your Bible and join me in reading the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 20. This is God's Word that is for us in this night. It is the Christmas story. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cunerius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You'll find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child 
lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One year I spent Christmas stuck in the Newark airport. It's just where you want to be, isn't it? I stared at that connection screen already knowing that the delay out of Harrisburg meant I had missed my flight. So I turned and walked to the customer service desk and was rebooked for the end of the day. And as I called home to tell them what had happened, Tears trickled down my face because I knew it meant by the time I arrived at home, the party would be over and everyone would be going to bed. So all my hopes of spending Christmas with my family disappeared. And my fears of being alone, of missing Christmas, became a reality. So I sat in this mostly empty airport watching a few people go by or rush from one destination to another. And and finally, after a few hours, I remembered. I remembered that Christmas is about a displaced people, about those pulled away from their plans and into God's plans. There's those shepherds who are settling in for the night, hoping for just a bit of rest. When the sky is filled with the heavenly host, and they changed their plans, and they got those sheep up and moving in the middle of the night to go and see Jesus, who the angels had told them about. Then there were the wise men who saw that star and started making plans and changing their plans to get up and go and to follow that star, not sure where it would lead. Then, of course, there's Mary and Joseph traveling for a census, traveling at a, a very awkward and inconvenient time, who arrive in town searching for a place to stay, and finally they're offered a place. And they are far from home. Mary gives birth to a baby boy and names him Jesus. I was disappointed. My plans had been ruined, but but I had not missed Christmas. I missed my vision and my plan for Christmas. 
Yet God's great gift of the Christ child who is with us, who is God with us, that still came. Because of that great gift, God was with me at that very moment, even before I realized it. And really, all was well. This year, many of us feel pulled from our plans and our hopes from Christmas. Indeed, I miss having you here in this space to worship together. This year's been full of disappointments and plans that are drastically changed, but we are not missing Christmas. We are joined with those who left their plans for sacred plans. The well-known children's author, Madeline Ingle, writes, for every Christmas, but maybe especially this year, saying there's nothing so secular that it cannot be sacred. And that is one of the deepest messages of the Incarnation. The sacred center of Christmas invites us back to Bethlehem on this night, centuries ago. May the words of this Christmas carol, may they guide us back. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Bethlehem was a place where people were waiting, hoping, longing for a day when God would save them. They also longed for salvation when they would no longer be separated from God. Their fears of things not changing, their fears of a precarious future weighed heavy on their hearts, yet their hopes, their hopes for salvation were lifted up, lifted up towards heaven, which may have seemed oh so far away as they stared into that starry sky. 2020 has brought us many hopes and fears. And tonight, all of those, all of those hopes and fears combine with those of every single year as we turn to the stars and ask, is God coming to save us too? I imagine that this year, there are many wondering, asking, where is God? God is rarely a part of this pandemic conversation, and yet, I believe God is in the midst. God is in the hospital room, even one of isolation, keeping watch. God is in the minds and hearts of the many scientists who've been working at record speed to bring vaccines to help. God is in the space between two strangers each with masks seeking to protect the other. God is in that moment when the restaurant owner doesn't see another month in the books, when a huge gift card order comes in just at the right time. And God is with that one who is far from family and struggling to make Zoom work, as we all have at one point in time. When suddenly the picture comes up and they see their grandchildren jumping up and down miles away, filled with that Christmas joy. So often we ask, where is God? And so often we're looking for a divine force to solve all of our problems and give us everything we want. 
And yet God never defines God's self as being a a magic fixer or a wish granter. God is so much more. God is the one who is above all things and who comes down all the way down to walk with us, and yes, to help us along the way, but even more to know us, to be with us, and for us to know and be with the God who created all the universe and also lies helpless before us in a manger. The miracle is the meeting of humanity and divinity, and it starts in Bethlehem centuries ago and comes to us tonight. Because on Christmas, those laws of creation itself, they get redefined as Christ is born as both fully human and fully divine. And so in that moment, that separation between heaven and earth disappears and heaven is on earth. The angels appear to the shepherds in the field proclaiming that good news and praising God. And so we sing, joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth, let earth receive her king. And we sit with Mary and we ponder We ponder the mystery of the incarnation, repeating, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is God with us. So we have a God who truly knows, who truly knows what life is like day in and day out, in the days of the greatest disappointments and the days of the most amazing joys. Jesus also came to change this world so that darkness would never take over, so that lies would not rule, so that God's light, God's spirit would lead us towards all that is good and beautiful and worthy. Nadia Boltz Weber reminds us Christmas itself, it isn't about getting what you want or making sure you're giving others what they want. To experience Christmas is to trust that God can do this thing again. God can again be born in me, in you, in this broken mess of a gorgeous world. Christmas tells us this year, And every year that God's dream for us to be together becomes real in the Christ child. That first heaven, that first Christmas brings heaven into this world. And a piece of heaven is for us in this very Christmas. Even if on this night, You feel like you are on your own in these strange days. Receive this gift of Christmas. For Christ is born today. And all of heaven and earth rejoice. We have not missed it. Let us rejoice too. And may that final verse of a little town of Bethlehem be your prayer, be your prayer this night, that indeed Christ would draw near to you. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen.
In this day, we are able to freely give because of the gift of Christ. As you consider what you have to offer, the information for giving can be found on the webpage under the giving tab, or you can mail it in to the church here. But let us pray together. God of wonder, we offer you these humble gifts. Receive them with our gratitude that through us all people may know the riches of your love in the Word made flesh. Amen. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul. together. Holy Lord, we come to you this night with hearts full of praise and wonder. Thank you, O God, for coming down into this world 
into our world and into our lives. For Christ was born and through that, you have changed all of our lives and given us hope and light in even the darkest moments of life. As we turn towards your light, we lift up to you the darkness in our lives. We lift up to you, O oh God, our sorrows, our regrets, our sins, our weakness, and our failures. Forgive us, gracious God. Comfort us. Heal us. We ask that you be with those who are suffering, those who are wandering, and those who are in desperate need of help. We lift them up to you and pray you will bless them and us as well. We lift up to you the darkness that we see in the world. Storms, fires, floods, and diseases that destroy. The evil that seeks destruction and holds people down. The violence that seeks attention. The wars that never end. In all of the darkness we see, we feel, we experience, we turn and look, and look around for your light and ask that you would help us in all the world to seek and find the light of Christ that is hope and newness of life. As Christ came at that first Christmas, we pray that Christ would come into our lives now, again. That we might be a part of that hope that the world needs today and on into tomorrow. Gracious God, as we celebrate Christmas and look to the new year ahead, we pray for your guidance, O oh Lord. Go ahead of us and walk right with us surrounding us with your grace, your peace, and your courage. Let us, let even us, be those who shine your light into the world. May we abide this night in the light and love of Christ, who came for us and gave us these words to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
the beginning and in the midst of the darkness, God spoke. Let there be light. light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word came and dwelt among us. And the Word was the light of all peoples. Let Let there there be be light. light. We light our candles knowing that the one who is the source and promise of all light is the one whose birth we celebrate. Let Let there there be be light. light. We light our candles in gratitude for the love and light that shined through the babe born in Bethlehem, who became the redeemer of us all. Let Let there there be be light. light. May we be so emboldened as to share the love of God with a world longing for light and hope and purpose and love. Let Let there there be be light. light. We join in the chorus of those whose carols have echoed through the years. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light. Jesus Christ is born for you and all the world to be God with us. 
celebrate this wondrous gift. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you.